The viability rankings thread for Inu has finally been updated into the format that you all know and love. So today, I'm going to finally be talking about the VR in this actually useful format, where we have sub ranks instead of just top, high, mid, low. <laughs> of course, I disagree with some of the rankings, so I'll tell you why I disagree with a couple placements, but I'm still going to do my best job to tell you why some of the Pokemon are ranked how they are, what they do, all that good stuff that you all know and love. Of course, before we get too far in this video, I'm going to give you a little reminder. If you have not yet subscribed to the channel, make sure that you are subscribed. And if you are subscribed, go ring that bell, go leave a like, comment down below, do all that good stuff, help our channel grow so we can hit that 10,000 subscriber mark before the end of the year. Now, our S rank. <laughs> Shockingly, it's basically stayed the same. If you want to break up our sub ranks to kind of mirror the previous one, you could say S mons are top, A mons are high, B is mid, and then um mid or medium, whichever you want to call it, and then C is low. And we still have Lycanroc, Dusk, and Slowbra up here. Now, I think there's a little bit of debate on where Duskrock should fall. Me personally, the way I view it, and if you're a member, you're going to know this because I did a personal VR thread very recently talking about, like, this is how I'm going to be voting when we do our update. I have both me and Xiao and Lycanroc Dusk as more of like an S-, minus because the way I see it is that Slowbro is just the de facto best mon in the tier, and as a result, I think it stands above them both as an S mon. But I still feel that Lycanroc Dusk and me and Xiao still define the tier in a certain manner that justifies them being an S, just not Slowbro S. When we voted, we didn't have an S-, minus option, we were just keeping it still S, A+, plus, A, etc. Just meant I voted at Lycanroc, Dusk, and Mian Chao both to be in S along with Slowbro. But that's beside the point. Slowbro, best mod in the tier. I don't think anyone really refutes that. It checks just about anything you need it to. Even things like Muk, Crocodile, um, Raikou, that could maybe pressure it. Terrestrialization, Calm Mind, like these are all tools that it has at its disposal to make those mons simply incapable of pressuring it all that well. And you have so much utility with it. Scald Burns, you know, <laughs> they brought that move back and we're seeing why it was so nice when it was gone. We don't have clerics in the tier. So it's actually kind of hard to team build in some regards when you're building a more balancey build because you got to have a Scald switch in. <laughs> and that can get a little bit dicey. So, so we're very good at spreading status, whether it's Scald, whether it's with T-Wave even. You've also got just a lot of good coverage, which makes having checks to Slowbro a little difficult. Most of the time, you're just going to be facing something like Scald, um, a Psychic move, whether it's Psy Shock or Future Sight, etc. Slack off and then maybe Calm Mind. I think that's the most standard Slowbro right now. But as we said, T-Wave is an option. You can have Body Press as well, which helps catch Brute Bonnet. You could have Flamethrower, that'll help punish some of the grass types a bit more effectively. You could even do like Iron Defense Slowbro, which gives a big middle finger <laughs> to any physical attacker that thinks they can beat Slowbro. And you talk about it defensively in the tier, it checks so many of the most obnoxious breakers. Literally, limit it just to what it checks up here. These technically are viewed as like the nine, I think it's nine Pokemon, the nine best mods in the tier. You check Duskrock, you check Cloyster, you check Flygon, you can check Crocodile, you can check Mew, you can check Mianxiao, you can check, you can literally check everything else that is here. When we talk about running a format, Slowbro does that like none else. That's why it's S. Now Duskrock's still up here too. I find that the demise of Lycanroc Dusk has been grossly overstated. It is still an absurd wall breaker, and the meta is still very, very favorable to offense as well. Yes, it's slowed down a bit. You don't see, like, that balls-to-the-walls hyper-offense build succeeding to the same degree that it used to. No, don't misconstrue that. It's still succeeding to a very high level. But it has toned down a bit, and as a result, people maybe have felt it's easier to defensively answer Duskrock now. You can build more defensively and limit it because it's not going to get as many one-hit KO opportunities. And the problem is, is that offense still reigns supreme overall. So it still has a ton of good matchups, and defensively, your answers to the small are not plentiful. Slowbro is probably the best, because with terrestrialization, you can force some very annoying 50-50s. It has to try and crunch the Slowbro as well on Switch in, and that's pretty difficult to consistently do. Plus, even if you do that, I mean, 
You gotta get the next turn right. But beyond Slowbro, I mean, what what's really checking this? Swampert? Swampert gets two shot by CC. <laughs> um, Rhyperior? I, I guess if you don't switch it on close combat, maybe? Um, Deancey sorta checks it. Physically defensive Vileplume, I guess? Because, uh, frankly, Vileplume may be the best check at this point. Because Lycanroc Dusk doesn't run Psychic Fangs as much as it used to. It still runs it a lot of the time, mind you. Just a little less frequently than it used to. But actual defensive stops to this spawn are still pretty inconsistent. And we've seen a lot of adaptations with it too. I, of course, have shown the world Sucker Punch Lycanroc quite a bit. I really think it's just the best. <laughs> Not the best, but it's, I think, really, really good. It definitely helps alleviate some offensive checks. It helps mostly versus, like, Flygon, but you even do a bit more to me on Shao with it, which is pretty cool. And shout out to Wadley for putting me onto Iron Head. I think Iron Head's a really cool tech, especially since Slowbro so frequently is Terra Fairy. So you just, if you want to predict the Terra Fairy the next turn, if you crunch it on the Switch, you can just to it KO it immediately with Iron Head. It's very cool. But I still find this mod is really good. And as hyper offense becomes less prevalent and you start seeing more just generic offense, some ways this is actually a buff to Duskrock because you're going to see more of those, like, pivot spam builds. It's why Porygon Z, for example, went from, like, irrelevant all the way to B+. So, those builds even just fit this mon more seamlessly than HO does, in my opinion, and facilitate like breaking so much more effectively. Now we can do our A+, Cloister. Y'all know what this mon does. It is Shell Smash. Um, it partly benefits a lot from Sticky Web, I would say. That's probably the biggest reason that you see Cloyster succeeding so much. But beyond that, it's just hard to deny it from setting up. The physical bulk being so good, and there being a lot of choice item attackers that just don't two-hit KO you, is very, very nice. And being Jolly plus two Cloyster, how that led to outspeed every scarfer that you really care to outspeed by just the slimmest of margins is a huge benefit we're still not at a point where we've got any good scarfer that really contests cloister and a lot of priority is still physical so you can have multiple forms of it it's just still very hard to actually pressure this mon this has got 180 base defense you need a lot of chip on it to really keep it down it's why I really do value offense as a style so much, because Cloyster doesn't have the setup room. Defense, more defensive teams, and this doesn't mean, like, bulky, it just means maybe balance. You gotta rely on things like having that clutch Terra Steel Mon that you can terastalize with and then just bunk the Cloyster. Or you have to do something like keep your slow bro very, very healthy and hope they're not Terra Blast Electric or Grass on Cloyster, or hope that you haven't terastalized your slow bro, because I I'm pretty sure you are very vulnerable to getting KO'd by a Shell Smashed Cloister if you Terra Fairy or poison your Slowbro. Yeah, not good. But, yeah, Cloister's just kind of another mon where, because of where the meta's at right now, I, th I feel like it just boosts its status in the tier so much because it fits really well into the builds that you want to be using right now. Kind of similar to Flygon, except Flygon's also here because... <laughs> It has 5 million sets, and they're all still pretty good. I still like Dragon Dance Flygon. Bandit, I think, is really good. Scarf still sticks around, kind of like a Parasite. Never really something you can get rid of without a lot changing in your life. <laughs> Even with all the new ground types, Flygon just still does so many things in one slot. That, yeah, you might want to use Crocodile on other teams, but Flygon is kind of just always safe to put onto your build, because... You get U-Turn, you get a Ground Immune, you get potentially Stealth Rug, you get potentially Priority First Impression. Maybe you're getting a really good Breaker, maybe you're just getting a good, good form of Speed Control slash Revenge Killer. Just a lot to like from Flygon still. Fits on all the same builds it used to. That's all I gotta say. <laughs> Crocodile, though, is a nice alternative. Large part, because I think it's a little bit better of a Stealth Rock setter. I like it more just for its defensive utility. I think the typing does a lot of good for you, just because dark type is nice to have on all your builds. Ghost types in this tier are freaking scary, and so having a good check to them that outspeeds, I think, all of them, other than, like, Hasui and Typhlosion, which I don't think that mon's that good. It's 
<laughs> that grid. That great. Um, it's still nice, though, to have something that's going to outrun Shandy, be able to switch into the Shadow Ball, smack it with Knock or Earthquake. And, of course, you still got Scarf as a really good set. Bandit is also good. Crocodile, in a lot of people's eyes, is actually, like, probably borderline ban-worthy. And the main reason for it is it's very hard to switch around this Mon. It's strong as hell. The dual stabs complement each other surprisingly well, because most things that you'd want to Earthquake... Well, if they're mean to it, a lot of them don't want to get knocked, because maybe you're holding boots and you're weak to Stealth Rock. And in a lot of the other Mons... Did you switch an EQ? They just get folded by a gunk shot. So I'm on very, 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 very problematic, very strong. Fits on also like literally every playstyle possible. Maybe not stall, but just about every other playstyle you can put a crook on and it'll work well. <laughs> Mew is A plus two. Mew still kind of struggles to find that one set that really pushes it over the edge, but it's got a lot of very, very good ones. Nasty Plot is still a solid wall breaker. Not really a sweeper in the traditional sense, so you more play it to break for something else on your team that can maybe sweep afterwards, something like maybe a Meteor Beam Rock Polish Deancey, for example. That could be a p possible core you could go about it with, um... That's another mon that I like there. I mean, maybe even like Quiver Dance or Ikorio. Kind of fit okay with that. And you've also got the Demon Mew, and that Mew set is probably the most adept at taking over games. Obviously gets steamrolled by any form of counterplay to bulky setup, whether it's Haze, Roar, Trick, Encore, etc. But it can be very hard to stop if you do not immediately respond to it. You can't give that mod too many turns of boosting or else it just runs you down very easily. And of course the set that I love using all the time, lead for hyper offense with Meteor Beam. I just think it's a great offensive rocker. And with how good Alolan Muck is and how much you see people use it, I like having a way of drawing it out very, very early on and saying, hey man, your time has come. <laughs> it is time to meet your maker. And then you compare Mew even to the other like lead options on those offense builds. I like that Mew also beats up on Serena pretty well. It's just helpful because you compare it to maybe like Bramblegast where Serena can just kind of easily beat Bramble 1v1 and then find the spin turn later. I like that Mew just has the more obvious 1v1 potential because Serena doesn't really want to switch in once you get the Meteor Beam. And if Serena tries to spin in front of Mew as you Meteor Beam, sure, it's faster now. But the Beaminator has put you in range of my Psychic. It's very good at making progress. Also helps too that Bronzong is like very irrelevant in this meta. Now, I don't want to say Bronzong's bad. It is still ranked. It's just not a common mon. Bronzong is very team specific and kind of like you're trying to counter style specifically. So, there's some potential there, but until Bronzong really picks up in usage, I will continue abusing Mew. Then we get to Shao, which I said, I think this mon is top three in the tier. I would put it in S. Scarf Me and Shao is the best revenge killer in the tier. This mon is strong as hell. CC picks off most problematic threats. Again, you gotta still deal with stuff like Cloyster. But you could maybe run Terra Steel and Mian Shell, and that'll make it easier to revenge your cloisters. His revenge kills like in Rock Dusk. You at least have U turn to try and pressure Muse. You've got easily revenge killing too versus like Thunderous and Talon. You just have to again play around potential terastalizing. You can revenge kill Nape. You can sometimes revenge kill Lucario. Again, Terra Steel making sure that you revenge kill Lucario. He's just a very, very consistent fast mon. Offensive sets are also pretty cool. Again, this comes into Sticky Web, talking about how good of a playstyle it is. Life for Man Chow, whether you go Sword Stance or whether you go like just U turn and have it facilitate your other breakers. Both options are very good and really only care about Slowbro. Although, even then, Sword Stance Man Chow doesn't necessarily care about Slowbro as much. Because you could go Sword Stance Terra Dark with Poison Jab, and you just kind of beat Slowbro if you don't get Scald Burned, which is really cool. And then you can even fit it on to generic balances as a breaker too. I don't love it as much there, but having fake out for priority is nice. You've got a lot of options beyond your like close combat knock U-turn. You've got fake out still. You've got like ice spinner to potentially pick off vile plumes. You've got stone edge to still help against your what's it called talons. In case you need to pick that mon off or something else. Pretty customizable. And also very hard to pin down an actual revenge kill because you got regenerator. 
Getting close combat was the nicest buff for this mod ever because it took away the um, incentive to run high jump kick with Reckless. So now you just always go regen and you just consistently stay at a high amount of health. It's very hard to even overwhelm this with hazards because you resist stone at not stone edge, stealth rock. So, I mean, yeah, you're not really regenerating a lot of health. <laughs> you're doing like 2% if you have all three spikes plus rocks. But at least you're able to cancel out hazards, and that can go a long way. Makalola. Now, there's some people that think this should be S. Those people I disagree with. I think Makalola is very easy to um, fit counterplay to on your team. But it is a mod that complicates game lines pretty consistently, too. So I'll reference the Keo post about it in the, na <laughs> the nasty plot thread. Yeah, we call it the NP thread, but it stands for now playing. But in the NP thread, the post Keo made talks about how generally you're able to fit easy enough ways of pressuring Muck on your team through methods like Trick, on mods like Monkey Dory and Meloetta, or just aggressive play with a lot of the breakers of the tier. A lot of breakers do just bonk this mon, or just good at forcing chip on it. So whether it's a banded ground type, or even if it's a mon like, say, Mew, which, you know, you boost and earth power the muck, it takes a million. It's not hard to put this mon in awkward positions. The problem is why it's so good. Okay, well, one, you give this mon an inch, it takes a mile. We saw Keo link a replay against a muck where he didn't lose the battle, but the first 10 turns or so of the game, he was put in a really, really bad spot. He got Scald Burned with a DNC, and the Muck came out, and he tried taking a bit of a trade with the Muck, and it just didn't work out at all for him. So he lost basically his entire DNC, and then he had to switch around it. I think he still lost basically the equivalent of another Pokemon. Eventually got the trick on the Muck and was able to Nin play around it, but it doesn't give you a lot of room for error when you play against Muck. Because you've got so much punishing in your toolkit with knock off, poison touch, and then having protect on a lot of sets as well just makes it hard to find your turns to punish it because people can suss out the tricks. Rest Talk Muck is also just a bastard, even though it's a little bit more punishable with, again, trick. It's still quite difficult to play against because it just becomes so hard to KO. Like, you waste all that time trying to slowly whittle it down with your knockoffs and your entry hazards, and then this mon just says, all right, nap time, come back and you, okay, what do you do now? So that's kind of unfortunate, but it's reality. A lot of the muck matchup does come down to finding your ways of just whittling away at it. Try, you know, again, like knock off Mew even, if you want to try some spiking Mew set. Knock the muck early, you turn on out, get your breaker positioned, and then as Mew can come back in later and set your spikes, that's how you try and pressure Muck. Force it to have to rest, get those free turns as it's using Sleep Talk, and play around it from there. It's a month. You kind of have to use its, or you can. You can use its style of play against it. That slow progress maker, it works against Muck as well as working in its favor. And in Serena, last day plus Mon. Consistently runs like the same set Power Whip, Knock Off, Triple Axle, Rapid Spin, and it consistently is rewarded for it. I don't have a lot to say about Serena that I haven't said before, so. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you still beat the entry hazard setters that we have in the tier. Lumberry is pretty cool as um, a tech that you can do to make it a bit better at switching into Slowbro as well. So that you have that one time where you don't get Scald Burned. It's pretty nice. And, yeah, I mean, we'll look, yeah, like, even look at the physical walls we have in the tier. Slowbro, whipped. Um, Deancey, whipped. Registeel, well, at least you get to knock that. Talon, well, at least you get to knock that. Keys, you can knock. Um, Quagsire, you whip. Uh, Vileplume, you Axel. It's pretty nice. I think it also helps, too, for Serena's sake, that Avalog is a lot less common now. So the previous best competition that it had, that also happened to just beat it down 1v1, is no longer super, super relevant in the tier. Now we go to the Eric. So this is where we first see me like completely disagree. I don't know why Bramblegast is A. I don't think this mon is that good. I think it's more like a B plus mon. And this is like a gross un not under ranking. God no, a gross over ranking. I think offensive rapid spin on Bramble is really cool. But the problem that you run into with Bramblegast is that this tier has so many good knockoff users. They can be very hard to team build with it. 
because you want to use Polter, but God, I got look at just look at up here. Crook, Mew, Mianchao, Makalola, Serena. You wouldn't use Serena and Bramble in the same team, but still. And you can even move it to down here too with like Gallade, Infernape occasionally. So many knockoff users. Venusaur, if you want to talk about utility, Venu. So many knockoff users exist in this format, and it could just be very hard to find adequate synergy between Bramblegaster and teammates in that way. Because <laughs> it just feels like you're going to accidentally give the opponent a Poltergeist immune Pokemon. <laughs> so, I love off it's a Bramble still. I think it's really good, but it is hard to build with. And then you try going defensive Bramble, I just end up feeling like the Mon isn't actually a defensive Mon. It's not bulky, even with investment. Like It's ugh. it's still just kind of easy to overwhelm. You don't have a large pool of Pokemon that you can feel, in my opinion. Very safe with pivoting it into. Very confident. And that's kind of where I stand on Bramble. Like I said, though, I do still like the offensive sets. I think they wall break very well, and they still give you your support, whether it's Rapid Spin or whether it's Spike. Usually, in my opinion, Rapid Spin, or my experience. It's kind of like an alternative to Serena, where instead of having to predict with using Triple Axel versus certain Pokemon and knock off with others, you just use Poltergeist on everything. And you can even go Terra Ghost, amp that Polter up further. You really put a lot of pressure on teams once you Terra Ghost this. I'm pretty good, Mon. I just don't think it's an A-rank mod whatsoever. I, I think the competition mandates that it's dropped further. But that's just me. Um, DNC as well remains prevalent, like we talked about with Serena. DNC just still has really good setup sets. I find that the Meteor Beam stuff still works really well, especially with our Steel types kind of falling off. I mean, Registeel you still see up an A, although I also think this is kind of an overranking. But you see Keys is only an A-. minus. Which might actually be the same ranking it was prior, but still, Keys can't really touch Dancy to begin with. Raj is down here, Zone is ranked down here too, and also just gets one shot by Earth Power. And then there's really not any other Steel types that you care about in the tier. Really love Offensive Dancy as a result for that. And Stealth Rocking still also works very well for the Mon. It helps that Talonflame and Noivern exist now as hazard removal options, because Dancy just beats them with ease. So... Pretty cool change in things. I feel like in the previous metas, Deancey didn't always have a great matchup against Hazard Setters. No, I do feel like I need to check what are old Hazard I mean, I felt like it was like Serena and an Avalug and nothing else. And yeah, you, you didn't really lose, you didn't really beat Serena that consistently, especially because a lot more ran synthesis back then. Avalug, I mean, you beat it, but like, at what cost? Actually, not even always. I feel like some Deancey didn't always beat Avalog, right? Nah, they always had Moonblast. You beat Avalog, fine. <laughs> Regardless, I feel like beating... Beating Muck... Not Muck. Although you kind of do. But beating Talon plus Noivern at the cost of not beating Serena and I guess kind of Bramblegast, but frankly Bramblegast isn't... Again, I don't think it's really an Amon. You, you beat more of the top hazard mover options than you used to. And I think that does help carry those kinds of sets as well. And they still check a lot of mods too, which is also a benefit. Trigalgy. He is also very good. Kind of like similar to Deancey, where he really benefits from steel types not being as good. It just means there's more likely going to be a team where someone's reliant on Rhyperior to switch into special attacks. Or Deancey even. And those teams are kind of Trigalgy food. Even if they're running like an Assault Vest Reuniclus, that's not the end of the world. You can go for that Sludge Bomb Poison pretty early on, and although they'll have Regenerator, you still put really good pressure on Reuniclus, you're able to flip turn on it throughout the game, and if you pair Dragalgy up with a good Dark type, like Kadal, very easy to put those Reuniclus in an awkward spot. Similar to Rhyperior's, where you got, well, again, it works for this example, a Crocodile on your team. You're really pretty good at keeping up the pressure on it. And even versus those mods, I mean, you don't even have to flip turn immediately. You could Draco them on the switch and then flip. And you're going to be feeling in a good spot. So, I like how it fits into the meta for that. T-Spikes are also not the worst. They're not great in this meta game because of, again, muck prevalence, but even Jigalgy, Vileplume. You got a couple really good grounded poisons, but 
there's still a lot of good targets to get your poison onto. So I don't think T Spike's like bad, for example, right? Reggie Steel is an A. Like I said, I I think this is a bit of an overrank, but main reason for Reggie Steel being A is Iron Press. Even if you're not running like your standard fully dedicated to Iron Pressing set, you can do like Stealth Rock with Iron Defense Body Press and Heavy Slam. And it just works as a nice anti-offense measure. Because sometimes, again, you'll face certain offenses that have a more physical bias with their attackers. And so when Registeel Iron Defense is up, it's kind of hard for these offenses to beat it from there. They can be put in a hole pretty quickly. And even versus Pokemon like Shandy and Hisui and Taif, that kind of give those sets issues. Well, you could run a different rocker with Registeel and just run Thunder Wave over Stealth Rock. And although you won't be beating those mods from there, it is still a good deterrent to them. And it, I mean, hey, a, sh a Paralyzed Chandelure is at least a little bit easier to play against than a non-Paralyzed Chandelure, you know? So, that's kind of the story with Registeel. He's still also really bulky, so it perpetually this mod is hard to Oka. Reuniclus and A. <laughs> Once again, I think this is an overrank, but... I mean, Assault Vest continues to see some usage, and I think Calm Mind with Life Orb is still pretty solid. I mean, with Crocodile being a very common dark type, it is nice that Yuriuni just pops it with focus. Now you can run some bulk on Crook to avoid a focus blast Oko, but the scarf sets won't do that. At least not commonly enough. Rapierior is an A. Like we said, it does kind of sometimes fill that void of, hey, I'm not really a steel type, but I still sometimes cosplay as one. <laughs> Even if you're just going to tear a steel. But it's the best offensive stealth rocker in the tier for like non- pure offense teams works very nicely to give you that offensive rocker that can you know punish the greedy play of certain hazard removal something like a serena wants to switch into you as you set rocks well maybe it just eats a mega horn to the face and dies bramble gas kind of the same issue where you don't really take on rapier that well with it because you're just not that bulky and i don't even need to go into the matchups with noivert and talon you just get stone edge to drop so it just it matches up well versus literally every move. Even throw up Avalug here, man. You don't want to be switching into Stone Edges from this one. And a lot of Avalug are Terra Poison, too. So if you're just dual stabs with Swords Dance, you will smoke the lugs. You will smoke the pack. So, very good mod. Only problem I have with Lug, not Lug, only problem I have with Rhyperior, really, is I always want to use it as a Shandy check, and you just aren't a Chandelure check. Spec Shadow Ball beats the heck out of you. Very, very vile cretinous work, but it is what it is. Talonflame is an A2. It does a lot of the same from last gen, where it's just very fast, good at pivoting. Basically, it's like the ideal way to facilitate certain breakers because it's a passive mon that, you know, I'm not going to say it dictates certain play, but it is good at forcing similar switches. I mean, you draw in the bulky water types very easily. Things like Deancey will switch into you a lot. Rhyperior will switch into you a lot. Slowbro. So if you've got wall breakers that want those kinds of mons in, Talon's good at forcing them to keep coming in. And the only difference, really, I'd say between these two gens, you do see more Defog Talon flame this generation than you did in Sword and Shield. And I don't think Defog Talon is particularly amazing, even now. But it is an option. And at the very least, Will-O-Wisp Talonflame is quite good versus a lot of the hazard setters. Things like Diancy, Swamper, Rhyperior, they don't really want to eat a burn. So, it's not actually like an awful fogger. I still don't think it's a great one, but a little bit better this gen, I think, than last. Even if it's even if I still don't really want to run it for defog. And then last one for A is Thunderous. It's still quite good. I don't think the pure pivoting sets are as solid but you still do see a good amount of them grass knot on them is like particularly good right now you can do fully special even like volt switch grass knot focus blast flash cannon and it's pretty consistent i also of course still support nasty plot a lot with terra steel terra steel just helps versus basically everything that tries to defensively check thunderous you already have grass knot to one shot things like gastrodon and quag but when you Terra Steel, like let's just look at these potential answers. 
<laughs> from the um, defensive standpoint. Muck doesn't deal with you as well, because it can't poison you. Deancey just eats a, fo a flash cannon to the dome. Dragalge can't deal with you as well. Um, Reuniclus can't deal with you as well. There's some mods that become easier to beat you. Or it becomes easier to beat you, but... A lot of your mods... Eh, they don't really like the Terra Seal. Even like Vileplume and Venusaur don't necessarily love it. Vileplume, I mean, you. Vileplume basically just forces you to nasty plot more in its face. But that then gives the opponent some extra turns. Maybe get their Mian Chow or Infernape in versus you. That way they can beat you down. So. It, you know, it's not like a excellent solution always. Especially, like I said, with Vileplume for some reason being so good at just handling Thunderous. <laughs> I mean, it's pretty wild to me how well Vileplume beats this mount, even when it boosts up, but... I think it's for the best. Now we're gonna go to A-, and you'll probably notice I start speeding up some of the rationales by now. Um, Gator's A-, big thing for Feraligator and why it's not higher up is the competition with Cloyster, but also... Slowbro's everywhere, and Vileplume's very common. These aren't impossible mons to beat, but they are still difficult enough to beat down, where it's not like this super, like, trivial matter. And there's also issues between, like, Dragon Dance and Sword Dance for Alligator, whether one is better than the other, people still trying to decide. I think people are starting to lean more towards Sword Dance being a bit more practical, though. In addition to, you've got the, um, Whole conundrum of what kind of for alligator set is worth running. This is the one that I came up on, where I was thinking maybe do like bulky with this type of investment. So this speed gives you speed for Deancey if they're modest max special attack, and then you just have a lot more bulk. And for example, we I was laddering with a uh, Rick. Mr. Dangerous 36M, if you know that name, <laughs> and we were facing a Lycanroc Dusk. And I believe it terrifying CC us, and we just ate it from full. So, that's cool incentive to not fizz def for alligator god, no, but to a bulkier for alligator. Glade is A minus. Some people would say it could even be A. Big thing is that Glade just is really hard to play around defensively. You have to pick your switch ins very, very carefully. Because even Slowbro, straight up. Slowbro gets two shot by Leaf Blade if they're not a resistant Terra to Grass. If they switch into your Leaf Blade, they are two shot potentially by it. Just by Life Orb Glade. That, I feel like that's the most succinct way to describe Glade's power. It is very hard to play against if you are not switching around it perfectly. Because things like Talonflame and Noiver, they just died a Psycho Cut. So if I'm switching them in particular Sacred Sword, and that's not what Glade goes for, I'm screwed! <laughs> and you got, you know, whether it's just four attacks with a Life Orb, whether it's Sword Stance with Agility Glade, the Demon Set. And the mod is very, very frightening. And I think we'll probably see it rise in the VR before we see it fall. Psychic types are not checks. You get knocked, and you take a million. Galvantula in A minus. This is probably a timeline that nobody likes. But Galvantula is good. Sticky web teams are really solid. And Galvantula being the best setter of webs, I yeah, we have to rank it pretty high. And I will say too, you don't even need to set webs all the time with those builds. You can sometimes just force your opponent into taking certain early lines to try and deny the Galvantula lead. And lead off with one of your breakers instead. Who is messaging me? Shut up, Wraith. Shut up, Wraith. <laughs> uh, but it's really nice, too. People will try. They'll see the dedicated lead. And they will say, oh, well, they're leading Galvantula. Let me lead off with my, I don't know, Taunt Thunderous. And then you can say, ah, but what if I led with my Lycan Rock and I a Celerox she turned one? <laughs> Stuff like that. But even then, too. You'll, you know, maybe see a Bramble Gas lead. You can play against that. You can go for, like, Thunder turn one. And try and punish the Bramble Gas for leading versus you looking for a Rapid Spin. You can maybe get the Paralyze on it. Or you can even just Terra Ghost turn one if you really want to set your web. This, this is, like, one of the few bonds where I felt okay Terrastalizing turn one sometimes. Just because it gave me my web and I felt webs won the game. 
Anyhow, it for Nape A minus. I feel like people would expect Nape to be an A, but the reality is Mian Chao is just such a better scarfer, and Nape isn't that great of a breaker. It's not a bad one by any stretch of the imagination. There's just a lot of other top mons that slow it down. You look at like Slowbro, Lycanroc, Dusk, Scarf Crook, Scarf Flygon, help Scarf Mian Chao, DNC, Talon. They make it a little bit less easy to break with. Noivern even. And as a result, it's in a bit of an awkward spot. We're not one set is truly great, but it's got a whole bunch of good sets. So, A minus. Keys is A minus. Debatably, it's the best steel type in the tier. I think you could make the case for it. It fits nicely alongside Rhyperior and Swampert. Pretty good on those types of balance builds. Good spiker. Um, decent Alolan muck check, although rest talk ones. It's not like the best matchup. It's more Keys gives you a lot of room to reposition. And you still beat Serena kind of consistently, which is cool. And um, even like Defog Noivern, you beat pretty well, so helpful. Lucario A minus. Another mod where it's like, I think it could be higher, similar to Gallade. I like Balloon Lucario a lot, especially because of Scarf Crook and Scarf Gone being so common. You could potentially just hold on to your Terastalizing for a little longer. Find some extra turns as well to set up against them by pivoting them into Earthquakes. And the only issue I've had with Lucario, really, is when I'm Balloon, you'll notice I'm always calcing. And I'm seeing these terrible calcs where my E-Speed, even with Terra Normal, does not get KOs that it would with Life Orb. So that's kind of one of the issues Luke faces. Which do you want? Do you want sustain or longevity or just survivability maybe is the better word? With the balloon utility. Or do you want to actually get your KOs on things like me and Xiao? Anyhow. Um, Ninetales and to a lesser extent Venusaur. Both in A- minus just for Sun. It's still a good build. But as I've stated before, Hisuian Lilligant being gone definitely limits this archetype more than it otherwise would be. Because you no longer have that one wall breaker that can tear apart every single check to Sun and oftentimes just 1v1 and beat them. <laughs> so now you're forced to run on things like Venusaur plus Brute Bonnet plus Charizard, which is much easier to play against. Sun just feels more matchup fishy than it used to. And again, you could look through a lot of the top mons. Things like Lycanroc Dusk just existing to vibe check some of the Pokemon. Um, Alolan Muck kind of with Terastalizing can be annoying for Sun. The Ancy's still annoying, Dragalge is, Assault Vest Reuniclus is, Rhyperior can be, Reggie can be, Talon can be. You've got a lot of natural answers, to even like Gator, just with Aqua Jet Pryo. And be at least a little annoying for some of Sun. So, down here. Noivern A minus. This one is a little surprising to me, just because I thought Noivern would be higher. But as y'all have seen, some games Noivern feels like a dead slot on my team. <laughs> it's not that strong, and it's also not that bulky, so that's gonna be a bit awkward to use because you take more than you want to take. You don't do as much damage as you want to do. Basically, any Steel type can be a serviceable switch into you, and you're a mon that with revenge killing is reliant on missing, or not missing, I should say. <laughs> you gotta rely on moves like Draco and Hurricane a lot of the time to revenge kill, which can suck. It just makes it less consistent naturally, which, yeah, kind of hurts the overall effectiveness of it. Um, Quag is A-, minus. I don't know why. I don't think Quag is very good, but he's here, and... I mean, he shuts down a lot of setup. Um... Why is Quag A minus? I don't know. Maybe he checks Lycanroc Dusk okay? I don't know what the CC calcs are. Yeah. That's why Quag's A minus. Um, Swampert's A minus too. I think Pert's really good for balance. I think it's good as well on like bulky offense. Very nice slow pivot. My only issues with Pert have been picking between Knock and Roar. Sometimes I want the anti setup that Roar affords me. Other times I want knockoff because it's a broken move. <laughs> it was nice to be able to knock things like Noivern immediately. But even though I'm knocking Serena can be kind of cool though. If they're boots, just make sure that if you have other hazards and you set them, Serena's getting chipped away at slowly. But yeah, I think 
Offensive perts also really cool. I've liked Banded. I think Banded is actually really strong. Even Assault Vest at least sounds kind of appealing, although the issue with Assault Vest in my mind is just instantly that it's an incredibly easy to chip away at Mon and it's very slow. So you compare it to Mr. Bonnet, M Bonnet El Brut. Um, not as easy to have that long-term effectiveness with because Bonnet's got Sucker. So at the very least, even when you're weakened and about to get KO'd, you have that last minute, bam, source of damage, whereas Pert doesn't. But I've like Bandit, I think it's a very effective breaker. And I think the rocker sets are also effective at what they do. Plume, it's still a great physical wall. I've seen some people say they think Plume is bad. And to those people, I think you're bad. Learn to play, Danny. <laughs> uh, Plume's still one of the best punishers of those stupid physical fighting types ever, even with Infernape existing with Flare Blitz. Yes, I will throw my Plume out versus your Infernape to punish the U-turn. Don't think I won't. I have that in me. I am that guy. Plume's also a good Makalola deterrent, though. Um, technically, it can be a Cloister check with Terra Water, although I recommend you find better Cloister checks if that's your counterplay. And it's a good check to Lycanroc. Like I said, they don't all run Psychic Fangs anymore. You see a lot of Swords Dance, a Celeroc, Close Combat, and then Filler. The Filler a lot of times going to have to be Crunch. And if you don't run Swords Dance, that Filler can be Iron Head, it can be Sucker, it could be Psyfangs. There's just a lot more moves being used now, so the odds of Plume checking Lycanroc Dusk just naturally are higher now than they used to be. B+. This is where we really begin speedrunning, because my throat hurts. Have a look, B+. It still is the litmus test of good teams. Whether you have no way of beating Avalog or not basically determines whether your team is viable. Because it tells you, hey, are you only running physical attackers? Yep, bin the team, you're walled by Lug. Good enough spinner as well. Not the level of spinner that it used to be at, maybe. But like, again, I mean, you also wall like in Rock Dust, kind of, which is funny. You have to Terra, but still. Like, you can um, spin pretty well versus either a Flygon or Crook. Even Rhyperior is, like... I, I know I mentioned Rhyperior can generally beat you down, but hey, maybe your Terra Ghost instead, and the matchup becomes a bit more tenable. Spinning uh, spinning versus Pert's probably the worst one, though, because Pert has Flip Turn. And Knock. So, like, you can get put in bad spots pretty quickly if it's Pert plus a Chandelure, and you get rocked up on Knocked and then, like, flipped on into a Shandy. There's some sequences that are a little more devious. Um, Bonnet, B+, should be higher, but, again, I, I think this Mon is incredible glue for offense and balance alike. Very good vibe check to offense, because your Sucker Punch is just insanely strong. Maybe checking, at, like, actually finding foes that truly checks can be a bit hard, but you wall Mew, which is really good. And you even check things like Reuniclus. I, again, this is like a mod where I don't have a lot of reason for liking it other than I have used it a lot and it succeeds on my teams. <laughs> and even Terrastalizing, since this mod is just absurdly bulky naturally, you can Terrastalize into a Poison type, for example, and all of a sudden, oh, I kind of check Shandy for a turn. It's cool. Um, Shandy, speaking of another mod that is way underranked, I don't know why this isn't like A rank minimum. The tier has a ton of good slow pivoting or just pivoting in general to position it well. Chandelure is still kind of without switch-ins. Even stuff like Incineroar only switches in once. And if I'm looking at the top Shadow Ball resistances, one of them's Crook, which you do switch into Shadow Ball. It's just not the best switch-in. You don't... It's like you need a spike up in your two-shot. And a Muckalola just... Okay, well, congrats, Flamethrower, and you're dead. Deancey's still good, too. Dreyagi's still good. There's plenty of Mons that do hold it back a bit. I just don't feel like they hold it back enough to keep it out of being like A rank or A minus. It's still a very easy to use breaker. Even a little bit of flexibility. I've seen Flame Charge some. I've used Air Balloon Shandy, damn it. Like, there's some versatility to this guy. Raja B. I still think Raja's really good, but. Eh. If people don't feel like it's bulky enough to stand up the rest of the tier. This, this is really just a mod I don't have an explanation for because I. It's Kaparaja. It hasn't changed what it's done in so long. 
So when it stops getting used, I feel like it's mostly just people think the power level's too high for Raja, you know? Gastron B+, I talked about this in my members video. The big thing with Gastro, in my opinion, is that there's not an archetype that you can truly say is a Gastrodon archetype. So even though I think it's a generally good mon, unlike Pert, where that fits on balance and bulky offense very well, and unlike Quag, where it fits on stall really well, there's not that one build where I look at and I go, ooh, Gastrodon defines this, man. It's not like it's bad on balance, for example, it's just... I, I gotta make sure I can justify it over Pert very, very well. Which, you know, not always the easiest to do. Incineroar is in B+, this felt a little high to me, but I do think it is nice to have as a check to things like Bonnet and Chandelure, Raja, um, other mons too, right? Sun is actually a pretty decent check into Sun. It's just a, a I guess, Mew kind of. There's a couple things that, like, do, is a good specialty check too. I've seen some people try Swords Dance Instant as well still. Whether it's like SD with U-turn or if it's like Flame Charge type stuff that you saw in Sun and Moon. I've seen both of them get a little usage, so maybe that's the way to unlock Insin. Um, Zone B+, this is definitely an under-ranking, but Spec Zone has like no switch in at all. And Assault Vest Magma Zone also kind of has no switch in. Main thing is just Terra Blast Grass often is a killer to a lot of the Pokemon that you would otherwise be able to get away with checking it with. You're thinking about your Gastros there, your Quags, your Swamperts, they all just get folded by it. So I like Terra, it's why I like the um, AV zones so much. Because you don't even have to lock into Thunderbolt as they go Quag and then switch out and do it later. You can try to condition your opponent a bit early on by doing that, but you don't have to to, you know, get annoyed at them pivoting properly into your T-Bolts. You could let them, you could let them think they're doing it properly and hit them with the Shabam, Terra Blast Grass, noob. So, pretty cool mon. I, I mean, again, I just really don't think it has good defensive counterplay when Terra Blast is taken into account. And it actually is pretty bulky, so you get some good defensive mileage out of them. Oricorio Pom Pom. Once again, this mon feels like it could be a lot higher, but with the specific brand of hyper offense that it loves not being in style right now we're talking grassy terrain it's not that apex threat that it used to be pz this is partly as the tier slowed down a bit pz really found a spot to be a good breaker on and sticky web defining the hyper offense metagame at least in my opinion that's also helped solidify it as a top threat Rotom Heat. I saw some people confused why Rotom Heat wasn't higher on the VR. I saw a lot of people confused why Rotom Heat dropped out of NU. <laughs> My perspective of it is just there's not really one set that I look at with Rotom Heat and I go, wow, what a great set. It doesn't really do anything that phenomenally either. Like, I don't know. I don't get a lot of teams that I go and say, wow, Rotom Heat just solves this team. <laughs> like, yeah, it's a great check to the flyers of the tier. And you can always pivot on a lot of your checks, or at least burn them. Like, for example, Gastrodon and Quag and Pert. You don't want to get burned necessarily with them, or Rhyperior. You, um, don't want to get... Yeah, actually, that's more of the thing. <laughs> you get burned by Rotom Heat when you're using those. You get Volt switched on constantly if you're using, like, a Dragalge. It's just... I don't know. It does, it does, it's just kind of an unremarkable pivot in my experience using it. I think maybe Nasty Plot with Terra Blast Grass could be cool to immediately dispatch some of those checks that we mentioned. But I feel like this Mon's style of play is just so slow and it still gets kind of just cock blocked by a lot of prevalent defensive staples to where I find it hard to really justify using this Mon a ton. Like, I, I don't know, it's just not that good. Scrafty B+, plus. probably a bit of a high ranking for it, but I mean, Scrafty could still do some BS with Terra, and frankly, with fairy types not being as common as they used to be, you don't even really need Terra. Like, I mean, we're looking at the top of the tier, right? You see Deancey and Klefki. And then down here, you see Sylveon. 
Like, they don't run the tier like they used to, so Scrafty maybe has a bit of room to come back. I just think the issue is you're still really forced to tear up by Pokemon like... I was gonna say Talon, but I think you could bulk up past Talon Flame. But I guess if anything it did, it'd be the fighters like Gallade, Infernape, Mian Chao even. And a lot of mods that you'd maybe think are complete setup bait, like Reuniclus and Mew, they could also just be set up and destroy you. Same with like Slowbro, where it could just be um Iron Defense, or even just Calm Mind maybe would beat you down if it has the right Terra type. I, I think though, generally, Scrafty still has enough room to find some good setup chances and do stuff. It just doesn't, in my eyes, steamroll the tier like it used to when it got those free setup chances. So let me on B plus, and we're, if I'm honest, this is for specs. I I, I think wish passers are kind of irrelevant in this format at the moment. So, spec Sylveon, it's still a really good breaker, but whenever you're one of those mid tier speed wise wall breakers, you're always gonna have a bit of a ceiling put on you. And so the question you have to ask yourself is: Is spec Sylveon such a good breaker that it can go higher than B plus, or is B plus just gonna be where it has to sit? I think the answer is probably yes, because a lot of our fairy resistances aren't that good, or they're very vulnerable to Sylveon coverage. So we look through the tier up here, what's really checking your Sylveon? Well, Registeel, eh, I mean Terra Blast will goob it if you have it, but it's not a bad check by any means, it's a good one. AV Reuniclus is also another pretty reasonable one. Talonflame is where you start getting a little worried because you're two shot by H voice. Um, Clef Key as well, you don't really do anything back, and H Voice is a million. Um, Plume and Venusaur gets, can get psychicked, and they'll still take a decent chunk from H Voice. Rotom Heat takes a lot. Zone's a good check, you just have to worry about some Terra Blast shenanigans. I think I think B plus for Spec Sylveon's fine. Torterra B plus. Shell Smash Tort is pretty good. The only conundrum with it is how slow it is. Oops, just scrape my mic there, my bad. The big issue for Tort is a reliance on webs actually being up. Because, what is it, the Mon hits like, what, 234 or 232 speed with Jolly? So, basically every Scarfer is faster than you. It's, it's hard to sweep with. I'll put it that way. It's hard to sweep with because of that. Something like Cloyster doesn't have the same issue because you outspeed all the Scarfers at plus two. You have to go Jolly to do it, but you still outspeed them. Tort doesn't. Tort is just outrun. <laughs> so, bit rough for our friendly turtle here. It, it's why I like Terra Ghost on it. Helps a little bit versus me and Shao and Infernape at least. Not always foolproof because they have knockoff. Infernape has Switcheroo even if it wants to predict you to Terrastalize and maybe greet a Shell Smash out. But... Yeah, I think basically just the counterplay that Torterra is very easy to fit. Even things like Slowbro, they could Terra versus you. They'll live your plus two Earthquake or Headlong Rush. And they might just Skull Burn you immediately. You've got Crook to Intimidate, Pivot around if it wants to try. And even Scarf Crook with Foul Play can be a bit of a, a devious opponent. A little malicious, one might add. And then Asuya Typhus here, because Mon is a little doo-doo. I think you probably want to run Shadow Ball on this more so than Infernal Parade, or at least have them both on the same set. I had been liking the Pivot set, not Pivot, the uh, Boot set with like Will-O-Wisp and three attacks. Infernal Parade, Lava Plume, Focus felt okay at points, and I even done Eruption over Focus Blast and it felt pretty okay. But as I've used this one more, I just think Shandy is better. I don't think the speed tier is that significant, because the Sui and Typh isn't particularly fast. There's not a ton of mons between Shandy and Typh. There is a ton of damage difference. So. I think a mod's okay. And like I said, I think spec sets are probably fine with Eruption. Same with Scarf. I think just generally investing in Eruption is the way to go with this mon. But, eh. Kind of unremarkable. Basket Legion. It could probably be higher. I still think Scarf Legion's actually quite good, especially on offense. The um, whole point of the shift was that we got water immunity, so people thought Legion would fall off a cliff. It really didn't. If anything, the main thing's just been that we have... Well, not Blastoise, God. We have Slowbro in the format now. So that is a sturdy water resistance that does not easily get pushed down 
Same with like Bonnet still being good, Serena still being good, Vileplume still being good, Venusaur now being in the tier. There are still just more mons that deal with Legion, but they're not blanking it. So I think Legion's probably a bit better than this ranking suggests. Um, so Titan here, it's kind of just, again, belly drum on snow teams is all I've seen it do. And snow's not really relevant, so there you go. <laughs> Dreadnought, same thing, except it's Shell Smash on rain. And I've not seen much manual rain, so take from that what you will. Iron Thorns, I actually really love Terra Blast Grass. I think DD with that is quite good. But having to be a Terra Hog is a bit suspect. And you kind of need two Dragon Dances up with this mon. So unlike Cloyster, you know, the other super scary HO Sweeper, it only needs one turn to get its speed bench point or benchmark. Whereas Thorns has to get multiple turns. Just gives you more room to be outplayed, really. But still a good mod capable of taking over games. But like I said, very, very terror alliant nowadays. Rely on hitting stone edges as well. The old set you used to see a lot of was just Super Cell Slam Earthquake Ice Punch. Which, again, that's more consistent. You've got moves with 100% accuracy. But now you're seeing a lot more of like Super Cell, Terra Blast Grass, Stone Edge. And it's like, ugh, I might miss. I might supercell a Swampert and feel really silly. Uh, Monkey Dory B. I think it's okay enough for tricking a Muck. And it's like kind of okay about revenge killing. Like, it's not a slow mon, it's Mian Chao speed. But I don't feel like it's as good of a revenge killer as Xiao because it's. I don't know. I feel like a lot of the sweepers care about it less. It, the one that it's like maybe the best at Revenge Code is Cloyster, if they're going like adamant. Because Xiao is a little more vulnerable to Cloyster terrestrializing and then living a CC at like low HP. Whereas Monkey Dory will just beat the Cloyster down because it's got such a bad special bulk. Raikou B. I think Raikou sucks and could be lower. There's not a single good set on Raikou, or at least like a single like really good set. Specs is like okay, but any other set has terrible issues figuring out what Terra type it wants. Grass seems to be what a lot of them decided on. I've seen some flying as well. But I don't think this mon does anything particularly well. And it's too easily answered. Doesn't really sweep teams like I'd want it to. It has a lot of fundamental issues. Um, Toxtricity and B. I think Specs is really, really, really good. But teams can end up kind of just naturally prepped for it with grounds and steals and ghosts. So, a tier also, of course, stronger. So, when you're trying to pivot into resisted hits nowadays, you know, Toxtricity's bad bulk is much more easily exposed. And a speed tier is just quite unremarkable. Like, Gallade is a similarly gr powerful wall breaker. Gallade is at a much better speed spot. And Gallade also doesn't have to go with a attack boosting nature to hit super hard. I feel like Toxtricity, when you go Timid, actually just misses out on Okos. Glade doesn't when you go Jolly. At least, it doesn't miss out on Okos that you really want it. And then Vaporeon and B. I'm gonna be honest, this is too high for Vaporeon. Wish Pass is not good, I don't know why it's up in B. But presumably people are more okay with Vapo as a passer compared to Umbreon. Because at least Vaporeon's got Flip Turn. So maybe there's something to, like, the safer passing of a Wish? Vap was not really fast either. She can get that slow wish pass. That's about it for me. Wow, there's still a lot of Pokemon. You're getting a true speed run on these. Obama Snow. It sets snow for Titan. Belly Bolt. Uh, it's kind of annoying with Toxic Stall, but at the same time, things like Plume, Venu, Dragalge, even a lot of Steels just don't care about it. Zard and Espeon are just Sun Demons. It's all they're here for. Eggy Alola, I think, is here just because, as a breaker on paper, it's kind of decent right now. Because, again, what are our fairies? Well, they're Deancey and Klefki. Those are far easier to beat up than a Sylveon or a Florgus, even if those were still kind of easy to beat up. I mean, an Eggy's kind of unremarkable as a breaker. Um, Florgus, B-. Scarf is not bad. Specs is okay. But you don't really see Florgus enough to rank it too high. Gligar, it still compresses some level of utility that people like with Fight Resist, Ground Immune, Toxic Absorb, Knock Off, U-Turn. There's a lot there. I just 
Gligar just gets overwhelmed far more easily than it used to. Houndstone's still a great spin blocker, and given the most common hazard mover is a spinner, Houndstone can stay ranked. And Teleon, good matchup fish into teams that lack a real water resist or water immune. It's just a lot more teams will have one now, and Noivern and Talon are both very good Pokemon. So teams are very easily going to be packing multiple faster monsters than Inteleon. Inteleon's speed tier is no longer the uncontested demon that it used to be. Kilowattril. It's kind of just a worse flying pivot than Noivern and Talon. And it, I, I don't know. It doesn't, it's not really done anything interesting in my games. Kingdra is okay on rain. That's about it. Meloetta is sort of like a budget version of Monkey Dory. So, <laughs> gets the budget rank. Melodic. Why would I use Melodic is the question I must ask. The answer is presumably like some combo of anti-setup, status absorption, and durability over like Pert, I guess? But again, it's a mod that has not seen success in any meaningful way. Minior. It shell smashes, but it does not find good chances to set up. A lot of mods that you would want to set up on do not let you for free. Like, what am I setting up on up here? Lycanroc? No. Slowbro? No. Clo no. Flygon? I mean, like, somebody's, like, maybe if it's an EQ immunity. That's really kind of it. <laughs> Mudsdale's just worse than the other grounds now because it kind of just sits there. Yeah, again, we talk about mods that are momentum sinks. Mudsdale switched out and then nothing happens other than Mudsdale hopes to set rocks or throw off an earthquake. Rotomo, it just feels better now. I think partly because, like, Slowbro, you can kind of use Mo as a switch in. That's why I like Mo more than Rotom Heat. I think it's better than Rotom Heat. But it's still not that great. <laughs> but it is nice that you've got, like, combined in one Scald switch in plus Earthquake immune. So you've got real estate against both Crook and Slowbro. Glowbro does a lot of the same as regular Slowbro, but to a much lower degree of success, or at least to a lower degree of success, so it just ends up lower on the VR. But it is still a veritably good Pokemon in case you wanted to try it. You just have to keep in mind that you're using the worst Slowbro. Tentacruel, it's just kind of bad. I don't think it's... A knockoff plus Rapid Spin plus Flip Turn plus other things it can do. It sounds really good, and then you use it and you get really, really quickly pressured, I've noticed. I think part of it is Tentacruel's not that bulky, so a lot of the hazard setters can pressure you pretty well, other than Klefki. I mean, Deancey's good at pressuring you with Diamond Storm. Registeel even can pressure you with, like, boosted body presses. And then you look at what it does for teams. It doesn't have Scald. I think this is also a big one. So the passivity issues, even though you've got Flip and Knock to make up for it, are kind of felt. There's just more Pokemon that switch into you and they're not like overly worried about what you're doing back. And an Umbreon is in here because again, Wish Pass teams suck. The only reason it's still like B- instead of C is it's like insanely bulky. And Dark types are always just kind of good. It's still got Toxic plus Protect. So, there. Ampipom could still vibe check offense. Arcanine, I don't know why you're ranked. Bronzong like actually kind of can counter sticky web teams occasionally. Like, physically defensive Bronzong is, for some webs builds, very hard to beat. Um, Duraludon, kind of the same angle. Flamigo, I I guess you have Scrappy CC over me and Shell. Golurk is strong. Gudra is some weird blend of, like, Shandy switching, but faster than Dragalge. And also, like, can always make progress against teams with knockoff Toxic. It's a weird mon. Um, Grimmsnarl, you have like Bandit is still okay. Bulk up is like half usable. Hitmonlee, I guess could still use terrain. Palmod is still an okay breaker, but why do I have to Terra Electric you? Salazzle, I have not seen one in years. Alola Slash, I, I guess Snow teams. Maybe there's some role for it as a specially defensive hazard setter. Maybe. Uh, Sceptile, Terrain, Smeargle, HO lead, and then Thwacky sets terrain. I hope you all enjoy. <laughs> yes, I, I like speed ran the hell out of C rank, but there's C rank mods. Let me know your thoughts down below. What do you like about the VR? Is there anything that stands out to you as something maybe you'd change? 
Obviously, I had plenty of things that I would change, so I'm sure y'all do as well. But, yeah. Hope y'all enjoyed. Shoutouts to everyone watching. I'll catch you next time. Peace.